Hi everyone! Welcome to my guide for speedrunning Resident Evil 7 on the Easy difficulty. This will be a series of videos focused on both the New Game Easy and New Game Plus categories on PC. These videos will teach you the base speedrun strat to the game, so it's perfect for anyone brand new to the speedrun. What's the difference between New Game and New Game Plus? New Game means beating the game as fast as possible using all the vanilla weapons provided, such as the knife, the G17 handgun, and the shotgun. New Game Plus means beating the game as fast as possible using the circular saw, Albert pistol, infinite ammo, and walking shoes. New Game Plus is the fastest, most competitive speedrun of RE7, and it's the one we recommend the most to beginners, but if you're looking to dive right in without having to worry about unlockables, New Game is still a fast and fun speedrun. Whichever category you decide to run, RE7 is a great beginner-friendly speedrun that is focused on movement, execution, and quick menuing. It may be cutscene heavy, but hey, we love our built-in bathroom and snack breaks. Before we dive in, let's answer the biggest question. Why easy? For RE7, there are two difficulties for the speedrun, easy and madhouse. We don't run the game on normal because there's not enough of a difference. Enemies spawn in the same place like they do in easy, they do more damage, and frankly, it just wasn't enough of a difference. Easy is the fastest difficulty. On the speedrun.com leaderboards, you'll see categories split up into either easy or madhouse. Madhouse, while difficult and challenging, isn't as optimized as a run, hence there's less runners. If you're looking to go fast, then easy is where it's at. Another very important note is that we'll be running on the Cero D version. The Cero D version is the fastest version of the game, saving 23 seconds throughout the course of the run. The short and sweet version is, Japan doesn't like decapitation, so it decided to censor that. You are welcome to run on the Steam version, and we actually highly recommend this as Cero D is not needed to run the game or to get a fast time. The biggest parts for the Cero D time save are, Jack 1 has a different starting point, which is important for the boss fight on New Game Plus. Jack 2 has a quicker death animation, allowing you to leave the more quickly. The save's roughly 10 seconds. And the biggest time save is the snake key, where the key is placed right here for you on the gurney, as opposed to inside the deputy. The save's about 13 seconds. If you're interested in obtaining the Sarah D version of RE7, I have placed a link in the description of a tutorial of how to obtain it for Windows 10. But for now, if you don't have it, you will be A-OK. -okay. To get started with your runs, make sure you're running on these graphic settings to get the best results in frame rate. RE7 doesn't rely on frame rate throughout the whole run, but it is important for the Mia boss fights in the guest house. Let's take a look at the settings. Go to Options, then Graphics. Make sure your screen resolution is set to 1280 by 720. Have your refresh rate set to your monitor, mine is at 240 Hz. Have your display mode as full screen if you're on Cero D, or on borderless window if you're on Steam. For field of vision, this is all preference, but I set mine to 80 degrees. Make sure your frame rate is always on variable, and your VSync is turned off. We want the rendering method set to interlaced, and pretty much all other settings set to low or off. The only setting you don't want altered is the shadow quality. We want to keep that at medium for the shadow puzzles, or else we can't see them. For additional game settings, change your reticle color to anything other than white, minus set it green, make sure it's set to always display, and turn the camera wobble off. Make sure the voice language of the game is always on Japanese or anything that's not English. Any language other than English will save half a second. Splits are not required for main game RE7 runs, but if you wish to keep track of them, feel free to install Life Split. There is an auto splitter for this game. Make sure this and all the items you want tracked are checked before starting your runs. Alrighty, we're good to go. Let's begin. Time will officially start once we hit the difficulty. The beginning section of RE7 is exactly the same, whether you're running on New Game or New Game Plus. Oh man, Mia Winters. Get used to that face because you'll be seeing it a lot. For many of us, we know the premise of this game, but in case you forgot, this lovely lady named Mia has gone missing and has asked her loving husband Ethan to rescue her in rural Louisiana. This cutscene lasts about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so if you forgot to use the bathroom or get some water before your run, now's the perfect time. After you gain control of Ethan, run through the woods to get to the guest house. 
There's not a whole lot to this movement, so just make sure your lines are straight and to hug the corners tight. Don't stay too close to the sides, as you may get caught up on invisible hitboxes on the branches. Every now and then when you see Jack Baker, you may stumble upon the Daddy Boost. Usually, when approaching Jack, Ethan's movement will slow down to take in what he's seeing. But sometimes, his movement won't be affected at all, and he'll still be at his normal running speed. We're not sure what causes this, as it tends to happen randomly. When we find out what causes this, I'll be sure to make an update and post it in the description. Moving on, the only movement you have to worry about is crouching at the ropes. Don't stop running, just be sure to press C to crouch as soon as you're in front of the ropes. As soon as you get into the guest house and see the first autosave, we will be doing a retry. At various points in the run during certain autosaves, Ethan will slow down to take in his surroundings. Retries reset Ethan's movement speed so he will continue to go as fast as possible. Our first retry is here at the beginning of guest house at the first autosave. A good visual cue is here at these wooden boards. As soon as you see the autosave pop up, hit escape, retry, and continue. Make your way to the living room, crouch, and pull the flue in the fireplace, and head to the secret passageway. You'll want to stand up after pulling the flue and crouch again into the secret passageway as staying crouched is slower. Head down the ladder and into the flooded basement. As you traverse through the water, we will be coming upon our first skip called the body skip. While you're crouching under the beam, turn your camera to the right so it's facing the wall and keep moving forward. You will know you skipped Andre's body after you hear the water bubbling. Once you leave the water, make your way towards Mia's cell. Pick up the bolt cutters, aka Resident Evil's most beloved asset. You don't need to be directly in front of them to pick them up, you can actually stand a few feet away from the desk. As soon as you see the interaction, hit confirm. This will be one of many max distance interactions that save time throughout the course of the run. Use the bolt cutters on the jail cell chain and then run up to Mia. This will begin an auto scroller where you have to follow Mia through a lovely tour of the basement. How fun! Since we'll be here a while, let's talk about menuing! Menuing exists in every single Resident Evil game and 7 is no different. It consists of selecting, rearranging, combining, or deleting items from your inventory at specific parts in your speedrun. It's often an overlooked aspect when you start running these games, but it's incredibly important. You'll want to spend the least amount of time possible in your inventory to maximize your time save. Since RE7's menu operates in real time, meaning you can access it during downtime, it adds an extra layer of depth and strategy to your speedrun. You can menu when doors are opening, during boss fights, or when NPCs are moving, like right now. So while we're here listening to Mia, let's open up our inventory, delete the email from Mia, and move your cursor over to the right so they're hovering over the bolt cutters. The neat thing is, the cursor will be exactly where you left it. In this case, since they're hovered over the bolt cutters, we won't have to think twice when we interact with the cabinet later. The cursor is incredibly unique in RE7 because in other Resident Evil games, the cursor is reset to the top left corner. In RE7, if you set up your cursor in certain places beforehand, you can anticipate where items will land and access them with immediate ease. It's so clean and awesome, and it's my favorite inventory in the whole series. Alrighty, now that we're done with our tour of the basement, we'll be executing a strat to make Mia break through the wall faster. Run into the side room, then stand at the pillar. Make sure you're standing directly in front of it with your camera looking ahead. As soon as you hear Mia scream and break through the wall, Leave the room, then run upstairs. Run into the bathroom, immediately turn around, then go back to the basement door. Go down the stairs to trigger the next cutscene. You'll see that Mia has gone full berserk mode. This interactive cutscene will play out, but do not press any buttons or do anything to resist. If you do, the scene will play out slower. When you gain control of Ethan, run towards Mia to make this part go quicker. After the scene plays out and you gain control of Ethan again, it's time to get the quick Mia trigger. This strat is very tricky and a lot of runners have different ways of executing it. This is what works for me, so I'll show that here. For reference, my FOV is set at 80 degrees. When you gain control of Ethan, look down and over to the white spot on the floor to the left. Tap W on the keyboard twice to move forward just a little bit. Then move your camera to the center with your mouse and move it up slightly so Mia's sneakers are slightly off screen. If 10 seconds have passed and Mia gets up, you've gotten the quick trigger. 
If you didn't, then your position was off slightly. Now that we've gotten her to stand up, we're ready for our first boss fight, Mia 1. We'll be using our newly found axe for both this and the next boss fight. Before going into the strat, I'll quickly go over some important things. Left click is normal hit, and holding right click, then left click, is a heavy hit. We'll be doing clipped hits, which require you to move your camera in the direction the axe swings. The general movement for both Mia boss fights is this. Run, crouch, heavy hit, and move your mouse to the left as the axe is swinging left. Feel free to practice this movement during any downtime, as it's very important. Another thing to note is that the axe damage is tied to frame rate. The higher your frame rate, the more damage the axe will do when you execute heavy, clipped hits. Alright, now time for the Mia 1 boss fight. The ideal strat is one hit. We'll grab the axe and run up to Mia. We'll do one clipped heavy hit and crouch as we're doing it. We we'll want to make sure to hit Mia diagonally from the right to the left. If Mia grabs you, you've executed the one hit. If not, that's okay. You can still keep doing heavy hits until she dies, which should be about two to three heavy hits. Whenever Mia grabs you, be sure to hit the space bar to block. This will skip a cutscene where Ethan punches Mia. If you executed the boss fight skillfully and killed Mia right where the fight started, she'll drop into the hallway. When you gain control of Ethan, run over to the phone. Don't stand directly in front of the phone or else it won't ring. Just stand near the front of the side table. After a nice chat with Zoe, head back down the hallway and grab the axe. When you go through the door and see the autosave in the top left corner, we'll be doing another retry. Head over to the cabinet, staying on this side of the table, then use the bolt cutters. Since we set up our menuing beforehand, we won't have to think twice. Just use the bolt cutters and pick up the fuse. Head over to the living room and put the fuse in the fuse box. Since our cursor is where our bolt cutters are, just move your cursor to the left to use the fuse quickly. Leave the room, head to the left, and enjoy the cutscene. If you're running on Sarah D, this is where you'll see the first part of censorship. This part doesn't save time or anything, it's just a neat fun fact. Oh, also, we get to keep our hand, and it looks super funny. When you gain control of Ethan, go up the stairs, interact with the button, then head to the attic. Make sure your axe is equipped. For the Mia 2 boss fight, the ideal strat is one hit. You want to make sure your frame rate is as high as possible for this boss fight. Before we initiate Mia 2, I'll walk you through the setup. When the fight activates, you'll want to stand to the right of the ladder, right in front of the wooden boards. My visual cue is this dark brown dot in the center of the boards. Next, we'll want to turn around and look down at an angle. My visual cue is this rock on the floor, and I make sure to tilt my camera down from there. When Mia falls down the ladder, we'll run up to her, do one clipped heavy hit, and crouch as we're doing it. Just like the Mia 1 boss fight, we want to swing our camera from right to left as we're doing the heavy hit. I'll now show the full fight. You'll know Mia's dead when she staggers backwards with both arms flung back. I'll also note that it's possible to do this boss fight without a high frame rate. You can still get the one hit with at least 180 frames, and you still can with the frame rate below that, it just gets a little inconsistent. The only reason we suggest the higher frame rate is because it helps a lot with your one hit. If you're doing this fight on a lower frame rate, you just need to make sure your positioning and axe swings are accurate to ensure the one hit. Don't get discouraged if you don't get the one hit immediately, as it takes a while to get used to the setup and movement. I highly recommend that you retry this fight and practice it as much as you want until you get the strat down. Additionally, you can make a save downstairs near the stairs to practice this boss fight. Before you get welcome to the family, make sure your back isn't against a wall or else the jack cutscene will not activate. But yeah, GG's, well done! You've made it out of the guest house! Next up will be the main house, where the run really opens up and gets super fun. Whichever category you choose, just remember that the guest house is exactly the same in both New Game and New Game Plus. If you liked what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe, or leave a comment below! I have other tutorials of RE7 on my YouTube channel here, so feel free to check the playlist in my channel! If you're interested in speedrunning RE7, have any questions, or would like to chat with our community, I have a link in the description of the RE7 speedrunning Discord. 
I also speedrun RE7 and other games regularly on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Marforia, so feel free to check it out for some extra cool content. And that's all for me today, so take care, stay hydrated, and be well, everyone! <laughs>